This video is a tutorial sheet on nested loops. We're going to assume that students have gone through all the earlier videos on block diagrams and indeed the two previous tutorial sheets because we're going to assume that you can do some of those things quite easily by now. The purpose of this video is to give you some tutorial questions in order to test your ability to deal with nested loops. Now you need to pause the video after you've read the question and make sure you attempt the question before you look at the work solution. Otherwise, you won't get as much benefit from this video. We've missed background. Students should be familiar with the basic rule for finding the transfer function between a loop input and a signal somewhere in the loop. So this is the typical type of rule that we're going to use, that the transfer function between a loop input and a signal in the loop is the forward path between the loop input and the signal divided by 1 plus the return path, where the return path is everything else in the loop. So the first question then. You're given an interesting looking loop here. You'll see it's got two transfer functions, m and g, but you'll notice it has two summing junctions, one here and one here which complicates things somewhat. And what we're interested in is to find expressions for the signals u and y in terms of the loop input r. Now, you're given some numbers here. I'm not too worried about those numbers. You can use those to test your algebra. We're really interested in the block algebra. So now's the time to pause before I move to the solution. So you'll notice I've redone the block diagram and the numbers here. Now, how would I deal with a problem like this? Well, the first thing to do is re-sketch the diagram in a, in a manner which looks a bit more similar to what you're used to. So you'll notice, so far, what I've done looks exactly the same. But I'm going to make a subtle difference. Where there was a path here, going back to that main summing junction, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that path and represent it like this. Now you'll see algebraically this is exactly equivalent because everywhere along this path contains y and everywhere along all these paths contains y. But by doing that it means that I can look at this diagram and say there seems to be a sort of inner loop in here inside this dotted box. And if I recognize that, I can now re-sketch my diagram like this. So the transfer function for that inner loop will be g over 1 plus g. So what have I done? I've started with a loop that looks somewhat messy with two summing junctions. And by a little bit of moving things around, I'm able to show that it's equivalent to a loop diagram that looks somewhat similar in terms of the blocks, although one of those blocks has got a more complicated expression, g over 1 plus g. And having got down to this lower one, I can now write down by inspection u equals m over 1 plus gm over 1 plus g into r, and y equals gm over 1 plus g over 1 plus gm over 1 plus g into r. Now clearly you can multiply those out to simplify them a bit. I'll squeeze in the y at the bottom just so you can see. So I'll use red. So if I multiply throughout by 1 plus g, I get y equals gm divided by 1 plus g plus gm into r. And you notice that the denominator looks a bit different. So by adding this second second summing junction, the denominator's got not just a 1 plus something, it's got 1 plus something plus something else. And that's perhaps a warning that when you have nested loops, please be careful in how you do the algebra. Don't just assume that the answer is obvious. Now use of MATLAB. If you want to do this on MATLAB, the easiest thing to do is use the same block structures that we've just done. So you'll notice this first bullet point simply calculates g over 1 plus g, which we did on the previous slide when we reduced the diagram 
to a simpler form. And then this second MATLAB statement forms g m over 1 plus g sorry, over 1 plus gm over 1 plus gm over 1 plus gm so we've used the feedback statement twice first feedback statement to get this g over 1 plus g and the second feedback statement uses that in the second loop and MATLAB will do that fine for you and we'll just demonstrate so you can see so if I go up here to the top, you'll see there's my G and M. Let's enter those. G3 of S plus 2, M, S plus 1 over S. And then you'll see I use these two feedback statements, one after another. Feedback G comma 1 gives me um, G over 1 plus G. And then feedback, this GC1 times M comma 1 gives me the second one. And obviously, I can do plots and everything else as normal on this new diagram. I'm not going to show that. It's not important. Question two. So this loop is a little bit more complex because there's three transfer functions in it, but still we only have two summing junctions. So what we're interested in is find an expression for this signal here, z. So not y, but z. And also an expression for u. So I'm just going to circle the things we're interested in. We wanted Z and we wanted U. So what's our trick before we solve these problems? Well, the simple trick is to re-sketch the diagram in a way that makes life a bit easier. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say I've got my summing junction here with R. We go through M and then I can approximate this block in here as G over 1 plus GH. And that gets rid of the second summing junction. So it looks much simpler. Now once I've done that, I can get u and y by inspection. So u equals m over 1 plus gm over 1 plus gh and all that into r. And I could also get y equals gm over 1 plus gh over 1 plus gm over 1 plus gh into r or if I multiply out by 1 plus gh I get y equals gm over 1 plus gm plus gh into r so there's the uh, standard or straightforward algebra however if you read the question it said please give me z. Well, that's straightforward because I can now just write z equals h y. So I just multiply my expression for y by h. Now again, if you want to use MATLAB, you can see I can get the inner block. Here it is using feedback g comma h. And then I can get the outer block, which was for y using this statement down here. So what have I got? Feedback GC1 times M comma 1. And if I wanted to get the GCZ, then I can now just do H times GC2. So again, we'll just show that. We've got the code down here. There's your G, your M and your H. So we can enter them. I can do GC1 and GC2. Now I haven't uh, here done the command with the H, but we'll just show you can do H times G C2 and it will do it for you. Very straightforward indeed. And if I want the step response, again, you can use the normal commands. Question three. Now this one's beginning to get even messier. You'll notice this time I've introduced three <laughs> summing junctions to make life a bit more interesting. And we're just going to calculate y because we don't want to be here forever cal calculating lots of different signals. So how might you go about solving for the relationship between r and y with all these lines and summing junctions all over the place? Right, we've re-sketched the diagram as normal. But what I'm going to do now is say what we should do is gradually unpack what's happening with the signals here to make life a bit easier. So I'm going to note 
that z equals h y. Okay, I'm going to put that note on that line there so I can see it, and I'm going to note that this particular line here has y on it. So now I can resketch this diagram to make it look a bit easier. So I'm going to put m there, and then I'm going to put g over 1 plus g h here, y there, and u there. So that inner summing junction with the g and the h can be represented as g over 1 plus g h. And now I'm going to mark w here as the signal coming in to the left hand summing junction. And I want to know what's coming in to w. Well, you'll notice what's coming in is z plus y. And z is hy and y is y. So I can now simply write 1 plus h. And so y comes in, 1 plus h, and I get w. And now you'll see that the diagram I've got is much, much simpler. So from henceforth, I can get the relationship for y by inspection. So y equals forward path, so that's gm over 1 plus gh over 1 plus return path, which is gm over 1 plus gh into 1 plus h. Now I'm not going to bother multiplying that out and simplifying it because the key thing here is to show that the algebra is straightforward. Question 4. So for the loop below, find an expression for the output signal, so the output's given over here, um, and find a dependence of the signal f, f is marked here, on the disturbance. The disturbance is marked here. So first of all, you'll see that this is a two-input loop. So it's got some um, connections with the previous tutorial. And also, it's got this nested loop structure, and we might be interested in f. So we'll start by doing part one, which is let's find the output. How does the output depend upon the target and the disturbance? So here's my diagram. And you remember, what we do first is we simplify the diagram. So I'm going to draw a red line around this inner loop in here and say, well, I can find out what that inner loop is represented as, and therefore simplify the diagram as follows. That inner loop is going to reduce to fk over 1 plus fkl. So that's using my standard plot diagram algebra. Then I've got my disturbance coming in here. I've got g here, and I've got h here. Now, as soon as I've done that, you'll notice we've got standard multi-loop dynamics, which was covered in the previous video. So pretty much by inspection, I can write y equals, oh, now before I start, what I'm going to do, just to make life easier, this fk for 1 plus fkl, I'm going to give it a shorthand of n, just for now, so that what I'm writing looks a bit more compact. So y can be written as gn over 1 plus gnh into r plus g over 1 plus gnh into d. So there's the answer for the output. Now obviously you can substitute in this n, where n is fk over 1 plus fkl, and it starts to look a bit messier, and you can rearrange it. But if you're using MATLAB code, you're more likely to calculate n first, and then put n into these formula. So you might be better off leaving it as I have it here. Now in order to do the second part of the question, I happen to know that I'm going to need this error signal in here. So before I proceed, I'm just going to write down what the error is. So the error, OK, is going to be 1 over 1 plus gnh into r. And then if you look at how the disturbance gets through to the error, it's minus gh. So you've got minus gh over 1 plus gnh into d. So I'm going to use that for part 2. Now, part 2, if you remember what the second bit asked, it said, what is this signal f in here? How am I going to define that signal f? So what I'm going to do is remind you of what we know. We've got an inner loop in here, f, k, 
and L. The plus and a minus there, and some signal coming out. And this F is the signal in here. So I can use my standard block diagram algebra to write F equals capital F over 1 plus F K L into E. But I already know E because I did E on the previous slide. And therefore, little f equals capital F over 1 plus F K L into 1 over 1 plus G N H into R minus G H over 1 plus G N H into D. And in case you've forgotten, we had N equals F K over 1 plus F K L. So you'll notice this second part, which looked quite tricky at first. All oh, this F's buried inside a second loop. What's going on? You see, all I've done is I've identified the input to that second loop, which is this signal error. And then I can treat it as a single loop on its own to find the relationship between E and F. And then the problem seems to be quite straightforward. So in conclusion, we've given a tutorial seat on simple block diagrams with nested loops supported by work solutions. And we've also briefly demonstrated that MATLAB can support this sort of algebra as long as you use it correctly.